Hey there, everybody. I hope you are doing well. I am a Fefe with Touched by Tarot and Beyond. If you're new to my channel, I'm glad you're here. Glad you landed here. I think spirit led you here. We'll call it that. Uh, I am, to introduce myself to you, I am a tarot reader. I've uh, been doing it for over 30 years, but I'm also a former newspaper journalist. That was years ago as well, almost 30, almost 30 years ago. I uh, did it for about 15 years. So I combine both things. On the one hand, I am definitely a spiritualist. I am I'm a high priestess um, and in both pagan and African traditions. So I mix that experience with, you know, some very grounded, you know, I love my facts. I love, I love analysis and all of that. So it's one of the things that makes me excited about doing this work because I like to combine both. That said, there's certainly no shortage of things for us to look at. I do also, uh, should mention if you're new, I do um, strictly spiritual readings. I do new moon and full moon readings every month, and I will be putting up one probably later today. I'll do a pick a card uh, on the new moon that we have coming up on the second. So yeah, I got to go ahead and get that up for you all. If you are... Uh, um, little housekeeping i am doing a live virtual by zoom uh tarot class on september 28th at 2 p.m eastern time only 33 bucks for an hour and a half with me if you if you've booked my hour-long readings before you know like that's that's a bargain i loved i want to make it accessible to you all and it's going to be my approach to this class is going to be you know 90 minutes can't teach everything there is to know about tarot but i do want to share my tips that's really what i want to do whether you're a beginner experienced thinking about uh, starting to explore tarot I want to share my journey and and give you some tips and ideas and things that um, that I've learned over the years that have made my readings more successful so I'm really looking forward to it. it's gonna be a good time if you're interested in that class is over half sold out now thank you so much um, but again, that's going to be on September 28th. Look for the link in the description below if you're interested in registering for that. All right. I'd love to have you for that. And I think that's about it, you all. Let's go in. A couple of things. This is a political read. A couple of things. Um, first, our hearts go out. I'm taping this early Sunday morning on, um, on the 1st. And uh, I woke up to the news of, as many of you did, I'm sure, of the six hostage, hostages being discovered in Israel uh, among the dead. Uh, among those is the son of, uh, what's his name, Hirsch Goldberg uh, Pollen. Hirsch Goldberg Pollen. Hope I'm pronouncing that correct. But um, what really struck me about that is it was his parents, or for those of you who saw the uh, Democratic National Convention, remember it was his parents, it was Hirsch's parents who were among those guests, uh, speakers at the convention. And man, did they, you could hear a pin drop in that convention center in Chicago when his parents spoke so powerfully, um, so eloquently, so it's so viscerally and it was amazing you know for many of us to imagine ourselves in their position the idea that they were even able to get up there and address not just the, the convention but the nation and the globe was watching that convention um, so much so much respect for them and so I ask your prayers that we send our collective prayers not just to the parents of Hirsch but certainly there were other you know those five other families who now have have had confirmation that their loved ones are gone but I want to take a look uh, so today from what I understand in the wake of that discovery and of course they're pointing fingers back and forth uh, Netanyahu was saying it was Hamas who killed them Hamas is saying no this was you know this was something else that was done by Israel and we do know that that during this time there have been events where is uh, the Israel arm Israeli army has in fact um, killed killed people there that they shouldn't have there were there have been convoys there been anyway we'll go all the way down that road that'll sidetrack me but you all know there's been a lot of of incredible mismanagement over the top stuff happening I want to take a look at they're saying that there are going to be protests today in Israel uh, that Israelis are fired up they are hot they want Netanyahu gone they are tired of the way this is being handled they feel the uh, hostages have in, in effect been abandoned because of Netanyahu's own um, 
desires to have this land basically operating as a land grab in Gaza and putting that his own political ambitions over the safety and return of the hostages. So I want to take a look and see if this momentum by the Israelis themselves is going to actually push Netanyahu just that much closer to the edge of the cliff and get him out of there. Secondly, second part of that, I have a feeling you all that Benjamin Netanyahu is very afraid of Kamala Harris uh, because of the fact that while she is supportive of Joe Biden's policies around the Israeli Gaza, uh, Hamas Gaza situation, she has also begun to, to carve her own path in relation to that in terms of saying, yes, on the one hand, US, the United States will always be a fervent ally of Israel. Hands down, point blank, put a period on it. But also that this destruction of families, this this over-the-top killing of Palestinians, uh, that it has to stop. And so I think Benjamin Netanyahu recognizes that among the tools that Harris could use as an as a uh, president once elected, once elected, right? Go for it. Let's make it, let's call it in, that she could, in fact, begin to negotiate with him, take a harder stance in terms of, you know, if you want our assistance, if you want weapons or money, whatever, here's some stuff we're going to need. Like, she would take a harder line. I want to take a look at that. All right? All right. Let's go to that first. Spirit, will these protests by Israeli citizens move closer? Will they have an impact? Will they actually land and have an impact to edge Netanyahu closer out of office to get him out of there to get him out of there is this going to move the needle to get him out of there will there be enough you know bang from this from this protest from these protests nine of swords there's anxiety around backlash um they they want to but they also don't want to the citizens of israel they, they're going to do this but there is such anxiety around what you know th this is dangerous um the queen of cups i think this is the divine feminine in general i think this is a movement especially among mothers and the women of israel who are absolutely just gutted over the the loss of life and um and there's something where they will be at the forefront of it there's a five of wands there's the conflict itself you know that's that is an indication of the conflict itself so but but to the point i think what spirit is showing us here in those three cards again queen of cups nine of swords and that five of wands you all is yes these protests are going to be um loud they are going to raise the bar in terms of pressure on netanyahu he already recognizes that israelis are done with him seven of pentacles but the way these cards are coming i'm not getting any major arcana which typically if there's something big like if this was going to be the last straw and get him out of there like that i think we'd see a little more major arcana energy and by the way somebody's going to ask me because they always do for tarot enthusiasts if you're curious about what deck i'm reading with today the gold layer all right all right i don't see major arcana and that makes me think that while we will certainly um, and a queen of pentacles. Man, is this going to be led by women. Women are done with him. You know, it's an interesting sort of parallel uh, to much of what is happening in our politics here in the United States around the, you know, women who have mobilized, especially in the wake of Dobbs uh, and the whole IVF and abortion issue here in America, not to mention you know, Donald Trump's history with women and, and the despicable way that he treats women, talks about women, etc. There's a component there with Netanyahu and the women who are going to emerge from these protests in Israel. Um, they're not going anywhere. I do not. They're not going anywhere. The magician. They're going to continue to band together. And, and I think Netanyahu's downfall, which is coming, Period. Spirit's been very clear about that. Um, this man, it, 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 again, I see a parallel. They're giving me a parallel to Donald Trump. T clock's ticking. This will not go on forever, right? Uh, but this magician says that they are going to create something 
uh, this these protests are going to be especially powerful on behalf of women. Women are going to be a, a, a loud voice in this movement. And they will be the ones who will ultimately topple him. I don't remember you all. You all are so smart. And I love that. I love, you know, working with you in this realm. Please drop in the comments. I seem to think I've heard before that there are women in um, political leaders in Israel who who could, in fact, and, and are certainly qualified and ready to step up. Uh, ahead of him. I'm washing the deck below. If you can't see it on camera, but you hear it, I'm washing the cards. So uh, let me know. Drop a, drop a comment. I'm not that familiar with the political leaders in Israel to know who his uh, a female replacement, possible female replacement could be, but that's what I'm getting. There is, um, there's going to be mounting concern. I just don't see it happening like like that fast or right away because if it were we would have gotten some tower energy we would have gotten some emperor energy we would have gotten some 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 um lovers energy even decisions being made around that we would have gotten some a death card perhaps you know just more oomph from from the deck and we didn't see that so i think He's gonna, he's gonna, um, he's gonna feel the pressure for sure. This movement with by women is gonna grow for sure. I don't see it leading to him, his immediate ouster. All right, let's see what happens with that. All right, moving on, you all. Um, there's talk around Liz Cheney perhaps becoming. And don't fall out of your seats and don't start screaming at me. This might, this might trigger some people uh, who are not Liz Cheney fans, and and I get it. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm right there. Uh, but there's some talk about her possibly being in Harris's cabinet. I want to take a look at that. Um, Kamala Harris did say during her interview, her CNN interview with Tim Walls and, and by Dana Bash or Dana Bash, that uh, she was open to possibly having a, a Republican member of her cabinet, right? And we also, we have seen, you know, we have seen an effort at the DNC, et cetera, to be more inclusive, to be all inclusive, nonpartisan, Republicans, Democrats, independents, wherever you are on the political spectrum, the messaging has been, you know, you can come band with us, join with us. We want to preserve democracy. We want to operate government in the United States, uh, you know, the way that we know that we could. We had speakers like Leon Panetta, you know, back to the Reagan era and, and you know, Reagan politics, which is sort of sometimes held up as a as a gold standard in in conservative politics. Um, and then you had Adam uh, Kinzinger, who, w along with Liz Cheney, was one of the was part of that committee that investigated Jan Six and took a lot of heat for it. Uh, so Liz Cheney, notably, was absent from the DNC. Some are saying that that was deliberate on her part uh, because she feels that her voice is so amplified in in that disgruntled Republican sect that she um, that she felt she it could be used louder and more powerfully um, outside of the convention but she has yet to come out and publicly endorse Kamala Harris we got a whole Republicans for Harris uh, packed campaign going on you know group going on out there that's growing and is on the ground and is working to to get Harris and, and walls elected she's not a part of that. So I want to take a look at Liz Cheney because this idea that she is so up there that she could not only make a late play endorsement, but then be ready to be effective enough on the ground to mo and mobilize enough, um, you know, more more middle of the road, uh, solid want the party back Republicans that that she can help enough that she would become a, a valued cabinet member. I want to take a look at that. Let's see what's happening. Spirit, Liz Cheney. Liz Cheney. Will Liz Cheney, first, will Liz Cheney come out and endorse Kamala Harris uh, in the month of September? Well, she, she's she got to do it. She's going to do it. Got to do it soon. Will she come out and endorse? Will Liz Cheney come out and publicly endorse the Harris Walls ticket? Will Liz Cheney endorse? The Three of Wands. She will. Um, she almost has to, right? She will. And I see a three there. Three days, three weeks. No, I don't think it'll be three weeks. It's sooner. Maybe September 3rd, something. There's a three. 
somehow a three is playing into it. With the Queen of Swords, that's Kamala Harris, or that's a card that I tend to get for her because she's a Libra, air sign. So Queen of Swords. And the um that with that three of wands feel that's a collaboration. That's a a grouping together. So yes, we will be seeing an endorsement, a strong, enthusiastic fervent, I think, endorsement from Liz Cheney. Spirit, would would Kamala Harris consider Liz Cheney to be a part of her for uh as part of her cabinet? Would Liz Cheney be in contention for a position in Harris's cabinet? Would Liz Cheney be in contention for a position in Harris's cabinet? Nine of Swords. Not looking good, is it? There'd be some concerns there because, ah, uh, I get it, Kamala Smart, she would not want to, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of strong feelings around Liz Cheney, regardless to what, because Liz was a trumpet, whether she admitted it or not, she, she did what she did, right? And people know she did what she did, so she's left a really bitter taste in a lot of people's mouths. I'm not so sure, that Nine of Swords is feeling like Kamala Harris would and the two of cups. Yeah, there'd be, uh, but it's reversed. I think there'd be, let me hold it. I'll hold it up right, even though it came reversed. Um, that that would be a meeting of the minds, you know, um, teamwork together with that nine of swords. I think Kamala would, would be concerned about what sort of signal that would really send. Is Liz Cheney truly a more... Um, across the aisle type of conservative or or is she someone who in fact has has a voice has weight but also has political liability for Kamala and we have the eight of swords mm -mm. I'm, I'm gonna go know you all I think that's just some buzz that we're hearing um, because you know Liz Cheney is a lightning rod she is a political lightning rod and um, and she will endorse Kamala we saw that but then, you know, them starting to, you know, wearing friendship bracelets and, and braiding each other's hair or something. Mm -mm, I don't think that's going to happen, you all. All right. And finally, I want to take a look at, is Florida in play? You know, there's all this focus on, of course, you know, North Carolina, Georgia, Wisconsin, et cetera, other, Arizona, Pennsylvania, other states that, that are vital. Um, and, and for many, you know, for many, many months now, I think, um, maybe even especially in the wake of what was it, 2022, when DeSantis, uh, won by 20 points against, um, that other guy, nonsense, Chris, Chris, whatever, doesn't even matter. <laughs> um, uh, but, but there's been this, this notion that, you know, you can go ahead and just write Florida off, especially because so much of what's happened here, you know, you got Trump in Mar-a-Lago, right? MAGA headquarters uh, in, in Palm Beach. They're, so so Florida's just been sort of like, mm, not so sure. However, Florida has on its ballot, many of you have heard already, uh, as other states in November on the ballot, they got more than enough. They got overwhelming support for to get on the ballot, um, legalization of marijuana, recreational use of marijuana, and abortion, right to abortion, right? DeSantis has been pissed, like working, having nightmares and working feverishly to try and tamp that down because, you know, like any tyrant, uh, he, he wants things to be done his way and he has managed to flip Florida on its head in so many ways, you know, over 3,500 banned books, the whole fight with Disney about, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't have the, whatever it, it's been terrible. It's been more than terrible, and it's been more than tyrannical. Uh, but but um, DeSantis has shown, and this is where my question, can Florida be flipped, you all? DeSantis got tremendous backlash recently because he came up with this bright idea of trans, uh, transforming thousands and thousands of acres of state parks into golf resorts and and pickleball courts and all this other stuff and even people who have been you know bowing down to him uh conservatives in the state have there has been overwhelming backlash like oh no you will not do that 
You know, you you can do all these other horrible things, but you ain't going to start messing around with the land because that, of course, is is part of, you know, what what makes Florida, the state of Florida unique is its its parks and its land and its its natural environment. So they have gone off. I am wondering if, in fact, um, that is going to help if there is some sort of swell of support for Harris they haven't been here that I know of, um, not yet. I know that her ground campaign is doing, is growing and doing what it can. Ace of Pentacles, though, you all. Bottom of the deck after I shuffle. Florida could be in play. It's slow um, because it's Pentacles, and Pentacles move slow. It's heavier, it's denser. But I think, Spirit, if they put, if the Harris campaign puts enough boots on the ground, Will Florida flip? Will Florida flip? The Hierophant is primed. The fruit is ripe. Now, whether somebody wants to go pull it off the tree or the vine or whatever, that's another question, you all. But I think the fruit is ripe. There's the Hierophant and there's the Four of Swords. Uh, an energy of some people are undecided. Some people want more clarity. Some people would would really benefit by or from more exposure to Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. Like exposure. If they could find some way. I know they are covering every corner of the 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 USA these days. Um, and, and six and seven times in these swing states. But that four swords would indicate that there are people who are tired of the nonsense. There it is, the devil. Devil's been coming up a lot. I think that part of it astrologically, for those of us who are into astrology, uh, we know that I think it is today. Pluto dips back in Capricorn on its last hurrah. Um, and it's been there since 2008, where we have seen so many Hierophant in politics can represent government. And we have seen so many changes in government, so many eruptions, so, many, so much resistance, so much now to the point of this crucible of, of energy and deciding bottom line, is it, is it, you know, good versus evil? Is it democracy versus autocracy or authoritarianism, you know, dictatorship, like those sort of extremes? That's, that's what's happening here. And this last uh, Pluto in Capricorn, its last little tidbit is from now until November 19th, right after the election, you all. I think to the question of Florida, people are poised to throw the, the MAGAs and the conservative movement a, a curveball. It's not a done deal that Four Swords would indicate that there's just a lot of people who have begun to search their hearts and their conscience um, and, and have begun to think, is am, am I really a MAGA? Like, what I'm seeing MAGAs do, is that is that really who I am? We have the Page of Swords. That's that, that's that new messaging. That's that newness, that, that fresh... Um, I think there are a lot of people in Florida, especially older Republicans, who are listening to the messaging of younger Republicans. They are ready for fresh voices. They are ready for a different perspective. Going back to that Four of Swords with that as well. You all, Florida is, uh, Florida is flexible. And I really hope the Democratic Party seizes on that. King of Swords. Who is that spirit? Ah, that's Dodo Head. Um, for entertainment purposes only. He's a Gemini. Trump. Yeah, is that, I usually get him as the emperor, but I'm going to tell you, his emperor energy, that oomph that he's had has kind of been trickling down a little bit. Maybe maybe he's been demoted from an emperor in, in, my, in my, my energy <laughs> to a king of swords, right? Yeah, that, that emperor's not working so well for him lately. And we got the King of Wands. That's his sidekick. That's Vance. So there's this examination that people are really having on. Are these two to be trusted? Are these two really reflective and representative? And there's the tower. I can put the deck down, you all. Florida's in play. You know? Florida's in play. And I sure hope that the Democratic Party does what it can 
I understand that everybody's stretched super thin, but Florida has a substantial amount of electoral votes. Florida did go for, um, it did flip back in, in Obama's era, 2008, and we've been hearing so many comments around, you know, we haven't felt this, um, this, this swell of change and expectation since the opportunity to elect Barack Obama. And now the stakes are so much higher. I mean, we're talking about freedom itself, democracy itself on the line, you all. So yeah, Florida's in play. I hope they'll bring some people here. All right, you all, I want to keep this shorter. Have a good week ahead. I'll check in with you all in a couple of days as uh, things develop. Keep your eye on Israel and please uh, prayers to the families of those who now know for sure that they've lost their loved ones. All right. Be really good, you all. Breathe deep. Try to stay relaxed, be respectful of one another, and I'll talk to you soon.